think you might know what this video is going to be about. Like the old song said, I wear my sunglasses at night. I wear my sunglasses during the day. I wear my sunglasses indoors or outdoors. Why do I wear them all the time? Because they look cool. These are what I've been trying to reproduce in 187th scale. In the scale for these tiny little people. Now I've done a few photo essays on it. I'm gonna do a quick video. So here we go. The first set of photos that I did, um, I used this 26 gauge wire here. And as you can see, this is very, very, very thin wire. Now, a little hint about the size of wires. The larger the number here, the thinner the wire here. So this is 26 gauge. Uh, a smaller gauge wire would be 30 gauge. Now, I don't have 30 gauge wire here. At least I haven't found any. And I was going to use some beading wire. Now what I've got here is a roll of 24 gauge wire. Now 24 gauge is just a little bit bigger than the 26. This is the 26 gauge. This is the 24 gauge. And you can see it's just a, a hair's breadth larger than the 26. However, these are both a silver metal uh, a, a steel type wire. I then decided to use this 18 gauge, which is even larger still, copper wire. Now the difference between the copper wire and the steel wire, copper is much softer. It's a softer wire. It's much more malleable which means it can be shaped much more easily. Now what we have here is another roll of 24 gauge wire. This is a soft brass, I believe. Not for electrical use, by the way. You don't want to use electrical wire for these purposes. But this is a 24 gauge. This is even, this is smaller than the 18 gauge copper. I also have a non-tarnished brass. Now this is, this is beading wire. Now this is 20 gauge. Again, smaller than the gauge of the copper wire. All right, as you can see here, the two of them side by side. The copper wire is thicker, but again, the copper wire is softer. With that being said, I'm gonna take a piece of copper wire and flatten some. This small anvil came, I either bought this from Tandy Leathercraft or from Micromark. I can't remember which. I have two small anvils. This is actually a heavier anvil than the larger, wider uh, based anvil that I have, that I've used before. Now what I'm gonna do is real simple. I'm gonna take this tack hammer. It has a fairly flat head to it. And I'm going to lightly tap the copper wire until it's flattened. As I'm, as I'm tapping it, I'm not just hitting down, I'm hitting down and going away from the wire. I'm shaping the wire as I'm flattening the wire. In other words, I'm lengthening this wire out as I'm flattening it. Now you, whoops, you want to avoid kinking the wire at any point, okay? You don't want to put kinks in the wire, that will weaken the wire and that's what you want to avoid you want to avoid any weak spots you want it to be strong flat but strong now here we are nice flattened wire and I'm going to work the opposite side of the wire that I just hammered I hammered this side I'm now going to turn it over you have to kind of work it a little bit lay it down I'm going to strike the opposite side of the wire to continue flattening and you'll see it getting wider it's also curving a little bit but that's that's not a problem you 
want to get it as flat as you possibly can. There we go. That's about it right there. That's what I want. We now have it nice and flat. You see the original thickness of the wire. And now it's been flattened. We're going to set up for the next step. At this point, I'm bringing in a heavy duty pliers and I'm going to grip the wire in the flat jaws of the pliers. It's gripped a little more than halfway in the jaws of the pliers and I'm holding it very, very tight. What I'm going to bring in now is my Dremel motor tool and I have a, a round stone grinder bit that I'm going to use. I'm going to simply grind this away now, holding on to the wire as tight as I possibly can. So take a good grip, so have a good grip on it. I want to come right down to the jaws of the pliers. I want to come down to the same level as the jaws of the pliers. Right now, as far as the width of the wire goes, you see we've taken it down quite substantially here. Just a little closer. I brought it in quite substantially. Okay, we took it from this width down to half of that. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to continue, but I'm going to come from the other side. First thing I want to make sure I do is that I, I don't want to take the entire length of the wire down to as thin as I can make it. I want to go from, I want to leave about, I want to leave a short portion in the middle. I want to leave it the width that it is now. So right about this part here, okay, is going to be left the, the same width that we have in the pliers right now. One side. What we have now are the frames and the lenses for a pair of sunglasses. I'm not going to worry about putting a piece of um, styrene or, or acetate plastic over the lens area. The entire set of glasses will be made from the piece of copper wire. Now you can see this side is real thin. So I'm going to thin down the frame on the opposite side to create the ear rest. Here are the glasses at this point. All we need to do is clean up any of the little nubbins that, that were created during the, the grinding process with the Dremel. And for that, we take a little flat file and very gently, and I mean gently, we come in and we just go along the wire like so. Works better when you use the actual file side. But anyway, that's what we're doing there. Now, to create a little portion for the bridge of the nose. I know it's all insane, but that's half the fun of this stuff. We get this triangular file and we proceed to, at the center, a few light rubs just to create a little notch for the nose rest. I mean, you're working for 187th scale here. So everything that you create is going to be 
minimal at best for these things. I don't know how well you can see it. My finger behind it or move it away, but there's a little tiny, tiny notch dead center. Now the, to further smooth the metal, we take a little piece of real fine wet dry and we're not using the file here because I don't want the file to destroy the metal. It's very, very thin and very, very fragile. We just rub this along. This takes off any of the any more unwanted nubbins. And you can see the little bit of little bits of brass filings or sandings that have come, come away from this. Okay, now I'm going to turn it over that out of the way and clean that up and do the other side. Where are you other side? It's here somewhere darn it. Yeah right there. So now what we've got is a nifty little set of copper sunglasses. How do we know what's right? Well I've done a few of these already, so I'm, I'm getting rather good at sizing these suckers up. But in the meantime, I'll bring in, well, I've, I've, I've dubbed this little fellow Mannequin Mike, as he's sort of my mannequin for building sunglasses. I lay the lens portions over the face, and they seem to line up pretty darn good right there. Pretty good. Uh, the next thing to do would be to shape these. Now check them, make sure that they're smooth. Okay, they could use just a wee bit more running of the, the wet dry over them. They're just a little rough in spots and that's going to create like a uh, fuzzy appearance to the glasses that you don't, you don't want. You don't want, you don't want a fuzzy appearance. So we're just gonna go over it a little more like so. And you can feel with your finger if it's if the metal is smooth or not. It, it, this is getting nice and smooth. Now you can see it's a little ratty right along the edge. So again, we'll simply take this wet dry and gently, and I mean gently, work it along the edge. You go too rough with this, you'll knock you'll knock them apart. Okay. You will, they will be knocked clean apart. Now, if you wanted to create a pair of clear lens glasses, you, can, you could very, very simply cut a narrow strip of uh, clear acetate, make the frames with the copper, uh, you know, without the wide part in the center here, and then simply glue the clear acetate to the thin, thin wire frames. You could even use a real super thin beading wire. I would say perhaps a 30 gauge wire would work, but that's very, very small, and that's what you would need. Now I'm going to trim these for Mannequin Mike. I'm gonna take a clippers and I'm gonna cut one end. I'll do that right here on camera. Hopefully not wreck the entire set. Now this is going to be clipped a little long, and that's all right. That's all right. Snip that end off. Now you can see we've got one half of a set of little sunglasses. Bring them close. Okay. Now there's a little nib right here on the end where it was cut. I'm simply going to take the wet dry and remove that little nub, that little nib, that little nub. Just... Sand it away very, very gently. And I believe it's gone. Now, shaping. Shaping comes next. You do this several ways. You can put the little tiny lens portion over the end of a file get it to the proper width spacing, all right, and bend it over. This is copper, this is real delicate wire right now. Not quite in the right 
spot. One thing you don't want to do is bend this stuff too many times. I'm going to do it one more time. There we go. And we'll just straighten it. And there we have half the shaped frame for the sunglasses. I'm going to do the other half off camera. And here we have them. Very small, very tiny. But all the same, we have a little pair of sunglasses. Now what you want to do is make sure that the frames, that the, the ear rests of the frames are at the same level. And then we simply leave them attached here. And we're just going to te test fit them on Manic and Mike. This takes a little doing. I, don't forget, I'm off to the side where the camera is directly overhead. But I'm off to the side here, and they look pretty good. A little adjusting. They need a little adjusting, but here's an easy, fairly easy way to make a pair of shades for your little guys. Next thing to do would be to color them in, and for that, I'm going to use an ordinary Sharpie fine point and simply color them in. The nice thing with the Sharpie, it'll show any little um, any little fibrous parts of metal that are still there and would need to be sanded away. If that's the case, you simply sand them away and go over them again and then re-ink them again. That just takes a little bit of doing. But you want to get the entire edge of the glasses on the side, the bottom, and the top. When you're done, this is what you've got. A little pair of shades. Here they are fitted to Mannequin Mike. And of course, the side pieces need to be trimmed, and they will be trimmed with little wire snips right before I attach them permanently. And when I say permanently, I'm going to use the Woodland Scenics Scenic Accent Cement. What I like about it is you can take things off and put them back on and back and forth and off and on depending if you like to, if you want to make something a little better. Now, you can see his nose. I don't have anything small enough to point to him, I don't think. <laughs> but you can actually see his little nose below the lenses of the glasses where the little nose piece was filed out. So I think I finally have a successful solution to the age-old how can he wear his sunglasses? Uh, how can you make sunglasses that these little guys can wear? I think I finally got it right. I think I'm a happy camper. I think I can move on. <sighs> I know I'm happy. Well, here we are. Twins. Not really. But you get the idea. Anyhow, this was fun. This has been a blast. It's been a learning, learning experience for both me and my viewers. Um, you know, this stuff is being made by the seat of my pants, literally, on the fly. Um, I don't know how, what other silly little phrases to throw out there with this, but it has been quite the experience. Um, Thank goodness for really strong glasses, optivisors, uh, little tiny 
hemostats for grabbing wire, uh, files, dremels, ah, everything. This is enough to drive a man crazy. But in that respect, this is also a lot of fun. And when you finally, finally reach the point where you know you've succeeded in doing something, and then you want to make it a bit, you want to take it one more step and make it that much better, then it's even more fun. At least for me it is anyway. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this nonsense with me. <laughs> I will be moving on next to creating the lieutenant. Uh, excuse me, just one more thing. Uh, and uh, also some scratch building of the uh, scratch built buildings from the French Quarter in New Orleans where the Longstreet show takes place. So this is a continual, continuing soiree, uh, like at the Red Pony, uh, for all the Longmire fans out there. But um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I have more things to, to do in the model railroading and miniature hobby. Uh, so uh, I look forward to coming back and uh, treating you all to some more uh, insanity. In the meantime, Bye-bye. Bye, bonds. <laughs>